What's up guys, this is Pi with SRLounge.com and we are here with F-Stoppers co-founder, Lee Morris. Yeah. Thanks for coming in, dude. Glad to be here. Yeah, so we were actually here doing a recording piece for your new video. You guys are working on a new, well, why don't you tell us about it actually? Well, basically it's just everything that we could possibly put into a video on all things wedding photography. So we've been working on it now for at least the last two years planning it filming little parts of it here and there mm -hmm. at all the weddings that we go to we try to get video clips of us working or different techniques that we're we're doing at these weddings and uh, we've compiled all of this into something that I'm not even sure how long it's going to be probably 8 to 12 hours somewhere in there yeah and we are discussing everything that goes into starting a wedding photography business from total scratch and Patrick and I uh, recently did it. I mean, we we started maybe seven, eight years ago is when I first started shooting. We just kind of go through everything that we went through. Mm -hmm. And we talk about where to advertise and how to start a website and how to start your portfolio and how to start booking jobs and how much to charge. Um, there's so many questions that everybody has when they start a business. And I feel like there hasn't really been a video that discusses all of that. Yeah. There's a lot of great things online that talk about how to shoot or how to start a website but there's nothing that, tying it all together. Yeah, that does it all in one product. And so the reason that I wanted to come out to California and, and interview you was just because you have such a different business than Patrick and I do. Mm -hmm. We've tried to keep things as simple as possible and we just work for ourselves and then you have like this massive team, this beautiful studio. And uh, so I just wanted the viewers of the video that we created to be able to see what's possible. If yeah. you like the simple lifestyle and you want to live more like me, you can. <laughs> but if you want to go crazy and you know create this wedding photography empire, then uh, <laughs> I don't know follow if Pi have. here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really cool. And that's what kind of, uh, when we were doing the DVD, we were talking about, okay, well, how do you do things and how do I do things? And we thought it'd be cool to kind of present this video of these different styles because Everybody always out there, you know, you go to like these lectures and they talk in such absolutes like you got to do this If you're not doing this, you're not a professional exactly and then we sit there talking and we're like we have two completely different ways of running a business right. yet both are successful and we're both doing this and making a living and Both ways work. So right. we kind of want to talk to you guys about that just kind of how each of us started and kind of go in that approach and then to get more info we're gonna have to well, you guys are going to hook us up with a free one of these DVDs so we can get No, you're going to have to buy it, but um, we're going to give you like 5 or 10% off. <laughs> All right, we can... Uh, <laughs> no, we'll give it to you. We'll give it to you. So we'll get that, and we'll throw up a review on that too so we can kind of tell everybody what it's about. I'm sure, based on what you guys have done in the past with the Peter Hurley DVD, all your guys' originals, it's going to be awesome. Well, the Peter Hurley DVD, I mean, I'm so glad that everybody's enjoyed that, and uh, it's it's been a big success, but... We had no idea what we were doing when we made that thing. I've, I've told the story a few times, but um, you know, obviously we had done F-Stoppers original videos that are yeah. like these 10 minute videos before. Um, and then I came to Peter and said, hey, we should do this much longer tutorial. And that's pretty much as much as we knew. Um, we filmed that entire thing with Nikon D300S cameras. Are you serious? That shoot a maximum of five minute clips. <laughs> and we shot for six days, 12 hours a day, Oh my gosh, with dude. four minute clips and external audio. So we had to sync up the audio and video for thousands of clips and Premiere would dude. just crash and like it was the biggest nightmare of our lives. So now with this wedding DVD, we've been working on it so long and we had the Peter Harley DVD to learn what not to do. Uh, it should be much, but, much better. I mean, I know from a production center, and you said too, you guys were working on that thing for like a year. It was like all editing. Dude, we've been editing this thing for like six months. Oh, it was such a <laughs> but, nightmare. Um, Not because it was like, it should have taken that long, but because we did such a poor job filming it with these four minute clips. It was awful. But I was going to say on the, on the production side, you guys, okay, could have done things better, but from a viewer standpoint of watching it, I, and I, I still hold this to this day that it's one of the best DVDs I've seen. Like, That's I mean, awesome. That's awesome. Like you don't get that in a sense whatsoever. It's one of the best educational DVDs I've seen, especially if you're into headshot photography, if you shoot people. So uh, you guys can check that out anyway, but so we're here to talk about wedding DVD and kind of how we do things a little bit differently. So let's start with this. How did you actually get into wedding photography? I never wanted to be a wedding photographer. Very few people do. It's funny that 
you kind of decided to be a wedding <laughs> photographer, just like a, a light switch. Um, for me, you know, I wanted to do everything that most guys want to do. I wanted to be a commercial photographer. I wanted to be a fashion photographer, even though I don't like fashion. It's just, I guess it's shooting pretty girls. Like yeah. everybody wants to do that. Everyone wants to shoot pretty girls. Yeah. And, um, and so I picked up a camera in college and I started shooting. I assisted a commercial photographer and um, it was awesome. I loved it. But because I had a camera, my friends who were poor at the time started asking me to shoot their weddings. And, um, you know, it's the first wedding. I think I charged 250 bucks. I didn't know a thing about wedding photography, <laughs> but uh, it worked out fine. And then the next couple, they were friends of mine as well. I, I mustered every bit of courage to ask for $1,000 wow. to shoot a wedding. And uh, almost thinking that they would just say no when I could not do it. Yeah. And they said yes. Oh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and so I was like blown away that I could get paid one thousand dollars for a day of work. Like yeah, never in my wildest dreams. Because before that, you know, I was working for six, seven, eight bucks an hour at restaurants or whatever. And so to think I could make a thousand dollars in a day was crazy. <laughs> and so I moved to Charleston, South Carolina, and um, I assisted commercial photographers. I worked for a camera shop, and I did start assisting one wedding photographer. And he was kind enough to allow me to use the images in my own portfolio. Mm. I started a website and um, I just started booking jobs. And I was shooting for magazines at the time too and I just realized this is a lot of work and I'm not getting paid well. Yeah. I'd shoot all day and I'd get like $200. Yeah, that's crazy. And then... What kind of magazines were they? Like local magazines. Charleston Magazine was one that I would shoot for in the area. and. Um, I shot for Jacksonville Magazine and I shot for um, other companies that would like run ads and mm -hmm. magazines and stuff, but it wasn't very good money. And then I could shoot weddings at the time for like 1500 bucks for a yeah. day and I was shocked. So <laughs> I, I kind of just fell into it. it. It was a business decision for me. I thought I can keep going after these little $200 jobs. Or I'm seeing people in town charging three, four, five, six thousand dollars for a wedding. What if I could just do that? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the tough thing on the commercial and fashion side is that the ones that make it big and that they make the big bun and the big dollars or whatever, that's like literally one percent of these photographers. Oh, I, I think it's I think it's so like, much less than that. E even that, yeah. if you go to like Model Mayhem and look at the percentage of people that do that for a living, yeah, it's like one one hundredth of one percent or something. And that's what's crazy about it is it's like uh, this such a small group of people are making the majority of the money in that industry. Yeah, and uh, to make a living, like I mean, most I think there was a statistic report that most fashion, most commercial photographers kind of eke out around thirty grand a year. For their salary, which is just not a lot. I mean, this is not, a, not definitely not enough to support yourself living in somewhere like Los Angeles or something like that. Of course. So, but um, so that background, I mean, there's a lot of similarities I, I catch kind of in how we started too. We, a lot of you guys know that basically when we started, we were kind of thrown into it four years back. We uh, we quit our jobs to do this web idea. It failed because we hit the uh, financial crisis. Our funding got pulled, and we were left jobless. And we just quit our jobs like two weeks prior nothing to do. We ended up doing web design, which led to getting our first photography client. And then uh, I'm not going to go into the whole long story because that takes take forever. So got our first client and then we said, Hey, we kind of like this photography. So I wish we focus on went to WPPI, realized that we really enjoyed this wedding photography side. I did at least I, I felt like I really liked it. Came back and we got a good apprenticeship again. We had a, a John Solano mentor us and, and just like you did, he let us use our images, taught us kind of helped us get our studio off the ground and from there we thought you know more than anything we had enjoyed the wedding side I mean for us it was there's a financial aspect to it too but for me a lot of it was just I didn't like shooting commercial work I, and I, I'd done some commercial work I'd done some um, fashion I've done headshots and I did uh, products I didn't like any of it like at the end of the day I just felt like I don't know I didn't really contribute that much to the world it, there wasn't that satisfaction in it and I know a lot of you guys shoot those kind of things and you enjoy it and you dig it. That's great. I'm just saying for me, yeah. I just should sit there with like a, a little thing of products, dude. And I spend eight hours shooting products. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to kill myself. Right. But weddings were fun. It was great. It was being able to party. And, and so it's that's funny what. because it's usually the opposite. Most people <laughs> say, I'll never shoot a wedding. That's the worst job you could possibly have. And I try to tell them it's really not that bad, you know. It's great, dude. Good to be with people partying. I mean, there's a lot of stress and pressure. But again, 
it all comes down to your personality, right? What yeah. do you actually enjoy and what do you do? Yeah. So your first year, your studio's up. What were you guys doing? I know you talked about kind of like your marketing, how you guys get business, but what were you guys doing to get business into the door? Well, keep in mind, it's it's not you guys. At the time, um, I had never met Patrick before. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. had moved to Charleston and um, Patrick and I own our separate businesses now. So we own F-Stoppers together, mm. but I own Arl Morris Weddings and he owns Patrick Hall Weddings. So this is just you by yourself, which presents a lot of other challenges I'm sure we'll talk about. But Okay, so how did you get people in the door? Um, for me, it was it was really simple, and this is what we kind of stress on the DVD. Uh, you must have a good portfolio, mm -hmm. and if you don't have a good portfolio, I think the best way to get it is to assist mm -hmm. and find a photographer that's going to be generous enough to allow you to use the images that you take in your own portfolio, and then get people to your portfolio. Yeah, I never had a studio. I still don't have a studio to this day, so I don't really meet with people in person. Um, if we do, we meet at a restaurant or something. And uh, the way you get people to your portfolio for me was always just buying advertising. I've tried everything and what I found works the best is Google AdWords and Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. Facebook ads at, at the beginning were the absolute best because I could target engaged women in my mm -hmm. area. Yeah. And the problem with Google ads is that you're gonna get clicked on by your competition. You're gonna get clicked on spammers that wanna try to trick you into getting to the top of Google by yeah. paying them. Um, but with Facebook, it was my ads were only showing up to engaged women, and so that was great. Now Facebook has gotten much more expensive because all the photographers mm -hmm. have caught on in my area. But I still do it. Mm -hmm. I still do it. Um, I know you do like all SEO, no advertising, right? We do all, yeah, basically all viral stuff. So SEO is a big part of it, and uh, the thing with SEO is that it takes a lot of it takes a lot of time, right? I mean, to get good SEO takes about six to 12 months to get results and so we have kind of like these long-term SEO marketing plans we also have short-term plans of like I mean when we first started we were Craigslisting jobs we were talking to anybody we're just mm -hmm. trying to get whatever we could um, now that we've gotten to the point that we have it's it's mainly like networking with coordinators um, working with a lot of clients and like their friends and stuff like that getting word-of-mouth referrals and probably a good 30 percent of our business comes from uh, SEO, just being at the top of Google. We're at the top of Google for Orange County and Los Angeles wedding photography, or at least the top three at any one point in time. And uh, and so now we're going for really broad keyword terms like wedding photography. Like if we can get the top for just wedding photography, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, but, that'd um, be good. But yeah, so it's kind of a mixture. But we, we tried the traditional pay for advertising, and we did it with, uh, it was like My Weddings or Wedding Wire, one of those online websites, and we paid two grand for six months we didn't get a single client. Now it could have been for a million reasons. It could have been our advertising wasn't good enough or whatever it was, but uh, that, that method just didn't work out for us and so we kind of went with a more viral approach. That's why I really like the Google and the Facebook is that you are paying for results. And results obviously don't mean bookings, but they mean clicks. Mm -hmm. And so I know if I pay $500, I should get around 400 clicks for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it's up to me, it's up to my website to make the sale, but I just need eyeballs on my website. Yeah. And um, I think the big difference between uh, you and I is that you've kind of jumped into every aspect of wedding photography and you've do the fancy albums and you do the SEO <laughs> and the blog and the prints and the post production and everything. And I've been much more particular about what I do and yeah. what I just have no interest in doing. Um, I think in my whole career, seven, eight years, I personally have made two albums. <laughs> okay. And um, I haven't made a print for a client in two years yeah. now. And uh, you know, if I did, if, if I were really big into albums and I had all these custom things that you could get or I was really big into printing and doing canvas stuff. I mean, it's awesome to see all this stuff back here. I'm sure I could charge more money, but at the same time, I would be having to work every single Monday through oh, Friday sure. on stuff. And so for me, uh, while I've been young and I don't have a family, I mean, you have a family, so maybe that's a, a driving force. I would much rather go to the beach Monday through Friday. <laughs> I'd much rather go up to New York and hang out or go to Las Vegas and have a fun. And so I've been very particular about what I will do, and I don't. I don't really bend over backwards for clients to do custom work. Yeah. We talked about that a lot. Mm -hmm. You'll change your style a little bit for a client. Yeah. If they come to me and say, "Hey, will you do vintage stuff?" I'm like, "No, but like, there's a lot of people in town that'll do that. You should check them out." You know. <laughs> and uh, if they don't book me, I'm just I'm not worried about it at this point. 
Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's really interesting that yeah, we get, you know, we talked about this kind of where we'll bring in clients and uh, and we want to kind of really deliver a boutique product to them, and so we have them do a mood board that's basically kind of defining what they like and and what is their style, and then we kind of cater our style around that. So mm -hmm. we could have one shoot that looks totally Vogue fashion type look, and we have one that's just lifestyle, one that's just you know, you know, super light and airy vintage type look, and so we'll kind of vary it up. But again, we kind of add all of our own flair to that look, and we it goes through the same production process that everything does, so it kind of has that signature look. But from shoot to shoot, there is a difference in that. And so when our clients come in and they say, you know, this is this is my indicator of like when do I send a client to someone else's? If they come in and they say, you know. I really like these other photographers, but they weren't available. Or like if they if they lead to basically us being not their first choice. But if they say, "Hey, I love this certain stuff on your blog," and they've researched it, and they know, and they like, "Oh, I love this shoot. This one I really like. This is kind of what I dig." Then I'm like, "Good. We can cater something to your style." But if they're like, "I tried to book um, this person over here, but they're busy," so I was wondering if you guys could like imitate their style. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "No. Like, have you seen us? Well, no. I'm sorry. You guys don't." It's just right. it's just a bad situation because you get people that, you know, obviously if there's anything wrong, they're going to blame it on the fact that you didn't do what they wanted you to do. Exactly. And I feel like at that point, too, that they don't have any trust in me either. Yeah. And they're going to be telling me, I hate it. I mean, I, I don't mind if, if they say, hey, I saw this cute picture that was posed like this and or lit like this. Can we do something like that? Sure, it's no problem. Yeah. But, man, I've, I've been to weddings before where, where they have, like, pages printed out from other photographers can oh, yeah. we do this picture can we do this picture can we do this picture and i'm like why didn't you just hire them you yeah. know I, I like i hope that you like the pictures on my website yeah because i think i'm doing some cool stuff too you know um so that's why i try i try to be very open and honest with everybody that i meet with and uh if if they're very into like other styles then i just go it sounds like you need another <laughs> photographer you know <laughs> There's one thing you mentioned though, which I think you know, being that you're you're running your business on your own, mm -hmm. I think it's appropriate that you decided not to focus on albums. I mean, you only have so much time in a day, and maybe you want to spend years at the beach. I, I mean, do like I whatever do you want to do with yeah. your time. <laughs> but um, there's only so much time in the day, and that's kind of one benefit that obviously having three partners. There's downsides. Every single decision you have to get approved by two other people, and but there's also benefits that each of us have focused on a specific area of the business. And then you know we have basically come together to create what we have. So I really haven't put a lot of time into the album design. That's been kind of Chris's process. Right. He's handled web and albums, and all I did was style and production and that kind of stuff. And Justin did the sales side, and so it's helped a lot as far as that side. And that kind of leads me to a question, which is: there's a lot of times where in just running a business on your own, I've gotten really depressed before, like just like oh my gosh, like. Maybe it, it could be whatever it is. Just something goes wrong and you're just like, ugh. I want to like end it all. Like not, not my life, but <laughs> the job, like sure. the, the company. Sure. So when you get into that situation, who do you rely on? Because in those kind of situations, I feel like my partners like are like, okay, you know, this is just a rough patch. One of us is always there to like lift each other up type thing. Well, believe it or not, I think I've only been in one funk, as you put it, <laughs> for, for my entire career. And it was three or four years ago, and uh, I didn't book or shoot a job five in a five-month time period. Oh, wow, dude. And um, I I had money saved up because I always know the winters are slow in Charleston for wedding photography. Yeah. But I didn't have that much money saved up, and my bank account went the closest to zero it's been since I was like in college. And uh, I was just depressed in general, you know, that, wow, I thought I was this great photographer and everything was going to be fine and how can this happen to me? And uh, right as I was about to get a part-time job to help pay the next bill, I had the biggest month of my entire career and yeah. I booked a ton of weddings and I shot a ton, a ton of weddings like the very next month. And so I use that as a learning experience and, and I try to be much more responsible with money now yeah. and plan for very dry periods <laughs> because that always happens with weddings and so I've tried to keep my expenses extremely low yeah I don't have any full-time employees I don't have a studio um, I don't have a car payment I don't have a house payment I, I just try to 
keep everything as low as possible so that during those dry periods, I just have to buy food and, and <laughs> pay my rent at this point, you know? And um, so that's been the only time that I've really struggled since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Of course, everybody struggles at the very beginning. But three or four years ago was the only time when I, I really felt bad and, and I needed help, you know, to get motivated to start working again. But since then, everything's been really good, and I've tried to live below my means yeah. so that, uh, you know, if I'm making a little bit extra money, it just goes into savings. It yeah. doesn't go into a new car or, you know, partying. It just goes into savings, and I figure I'll, I'll buy a house one day with it, and uh, that'll be better than wasting it like I used to when I was a bit younger. Well, it's, to me, it's really impressive that you've been able to do this on your own, dude, because for me, I, I've already admitted to myself that if I were on my own, I would not want to run a business alone. Like, see, I'm just, I don't know if I can believe that because I see what you've built here and you guys can't see all the ins and outs, <laughs> but they have this amazing organization going. And, and yeah, it, your business probably wouldn't be as big as what it is now since you have like three owners and everybody working for the same goal. But you would have no problem. You're so much so, more, uh, you know, it, it's professional. For at this. me, it's like the emotional side because, like, I get into these down slumps, and I rely on Chris and Jess to say, "No, you know, everything's okay. Just keep yeah, going through it." Yeah. I know if I were by myself, I'd just be like, "Ah, I'm just gonna go take that six figure job that is willing to keep me a check every single week, and uh, I'll go back to hating my life, basically being an accountant." <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But at least, like, I, I just can't handle like. That's a big part of running your own business is being able to handle the stress of the ups and downs and that kind of roller coaster ride, the feast or famine thing. And I can't do it on my own. That's why I have to have you know partners. But that's impressive that you've been able to do it. Well, I, I think I think it's just the way that I do run my business, and it's so funny because I I have friends that are photographers in Charleston, and and they'll complain all the time about, oh my gosh, I'm getting so burnt out on. Weddings are, oh man, I've got so many shoots for these magazines coming up, it's just too much. And I go, it's your business. Yeah, that's Stop your career, dude. Stop shooting it. Or no, just don't take the job. Yeah. I do that all the time. I like, <laughs> if somebody comes to me and says, hey, do you want to shoot this thing for $500? No. The answer yeah. is so easy for me because I have money saved up in a bank account. I don't need the job. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have a lot of friends that they, I think they spend their money on the nicer car. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they have this expensive car payment. So now they have to take the job to pay for these things in their life just to keep their life constantly yeah. going. And so I've tried to keep things much more simple than that and pay yeah. cash for things, never go in debt. And uh, we have that same exact mentality on that side, actually. We firmly believe all three partners live below our means, well below your means, because when you're running your own business, you need to be able to like quickly say, okay, I need to put 10 grand into this back into my company. Exactly. And you I, don't have that money. And I feel like that's what's been, the, that's the only reason that Patrick and I were able to do what we were able to do with F-stoppers, and we've got these products that are gonna be coming out soon, is um, we were making enough money with weddings, and we started F-stoppers three years ago, and we have not spent one dollar that we've made on F-Stoppers for anything personal. Yeah. Every single That's penny crazy. that we made is still sitting in a bank account. And we use it for trips like this, coming out to interview you and stuff. But um, it's been tempting. I want a sports car bad. <laughs> <laughs> but Patrick, he talks some sense to me. No, 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 let's keep that money there. Like, we'll be able to use it in the near future. And we have. Like... Um, it's it's not fun to pour money back into your business, but I think that's the best thing that you can do to get the ball rolling. For once sure. once you get to the point where you want your business to be, then enjoy the money a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Well, and that kind of brings me back to another, well, I don't know if it brings me, I'll, I'll take it back to this, but one interesting thing that we, we talked about was kind of the differences in, in production that goes into the work. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, shooting wise, I know you, you're a guy, you guys are a little more gear intensive than we are probably. Maybe. We came back with our Prius when we first, he was first waiting outside and we, I opened up the, my, my Prius trunk and uh, I'm like, uh, hold on Lee, let me unload real quick. He's like, unload what? Is this it? <laughs> He's like, what? It was like two bags. I've never <laughs> seen anything like it before. I, uh, my car is weighed down. Like the trunk is full to the brim. You wouldn't even believe that I fit that much stuff. And then my entire back seat to the ceiling. <laughs> So I can't bring I can't bring to assistance many times. Like they have to drive their own car because my car is so full. I need I need a huge pickup truck to and get I, to weddings. I already thought that we were gear intensive, dude. That's crazy. But 
Shooting wise, I mean, we do a lot of similar things. Out on the job, you're using a lot of lighting equipment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we do the same thing. We use pocket strobes. I think you're using full strobes basically out when you're shooting, right? Sometimes. Um, I, I mean, when, I, when I'm outside, I use um, SB800s or SB900s in little soft boxes, pocket wizards. Mm -hmm. And then my assistants are just manually changing the power output on the flashes. I know Patrick now, I think he uses an Einstein or an Alien B just because it's a little bit more powerful. Yeah. And so his assistants just carry a Vagabond. I may move to that, but um, I bring a lot of studio equipment for my photo booth oh, that okay, I set up yeah. at weddings. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I'll also strobe an entire room or I will strobe an entire church. Mm -hmm for pose pictures. Mm. So I'll come in sometimes with two 1000 watt pro photo lights, flash the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So I'm not actually lighting the subjects directly. I'm sure. lighting up the whole church. It's the easiest, most perfectly lit pose pictures you could do. Yeah. It's kind of a pain because you got to carry in these big heavy lights. But yeah. once you do, the lighting's so perfect on every single person. You don't have to worry about shadows casting on people behind. You don't have to worry about lighting the subject in the background being too dark. Mm. It's just these perfect, beautiful lit shots. And I feel like for family pictures, that's great because you mm. want to see who's there. It's kind of just documentation. When it comes time to shoot the wedding party or the bride and the groom, then I get a little more artistic. You can, mm -hmm. you know, use smaller lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after that, when it comes to the uh, post production side, what are you guys? That's doing? where we differ a little we bit. We differ I think. quite a bit on that side. Yeah. So um, people lose all respect for me when I tell them this, but <laughs> this is the first year that, that. that I've ever shot raw. <laughs> that I've ever shot raw. And the only reason that I switched to raw is because now I have somebody that does my pro processing and she's running the camera right now. <laughs> and uh, I- I learn. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't know how to use Lightroom. I, uh, I, I installed it a few months ago and uh, I opened it and then I just closed it and uninstalled it. Like, <laughs> I, I, so, I, I, I don't even know how to open raw files. Like I send them to Lauren and then she'll send them back to me as a JPEG because like I can't get them to look right. That's the, that's the reason I, I always shot JPEG was because I would shoot raw plus JPEG. Yeah. And then I would try to, without looking at the JPEG, I would go into a program like Lightroom or Photoshop and mess with all the sliders. Try and get to look. Just try to get it to look good. Yeah. And then I would look I would compare them afterwards and I like the JPEG better every time. Yeah. Because I think I would I would go too far, I would just keep messing with stuff until it looked weird and then I'd go back to the original JPEG and just go, that's simpler but that's better. I just like yeah. the simple look. And so I think Lightroom, the new Lightrooms have gotten much better though. They can mimic the Nikon look. That was always a big problem for mm -hmm. me. Canon cameras you could get it to look great real quick. Mm -hmm. Nikon colors are like real weird or something. More yeah, and so Lightroom in the past could not get it to look the same. It, mm -hmm. would, it would be this grungy, greenish yeah, color. Yeah, it'd have a green hue to it. But I now it's, it's got the Nikon red color. Yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense, but... Um, no, it totally does. That's kind of one, one of the things that, I mean, is known in the industry. You go to the camera shop and they, they'll go, okay, Nikon, better overall gear <laughs> I mean I don't know I, I don't even like, know if I agree with that but okay I feel like everything I don't maybe this is just a, a bitter cannon shooter but I feel like everything is built better dude like really yeah like the the flashes I mean it, your flashes make our flashes look like toys okay hmm. like how much control there is in an, a Nikon flash compared to like an SB900 versus a 580 EX okay granted we just got the 600s and those are aptly $600 I think too so those are really pricey but yeah but Canon's kind of always been the slightly nicer skin tones and files to work yeah, with. Yeah, that's Nikon's true. always been more, uh, I feel like, at least I feel like more kind of better gear, like as far as slightly better noise performance, better, you know, and the new D800 is ridiculous. Like two extra stops of freaking dynamic range. Yeah, I on love that. the D800. It's insane. But there's one thing that you must be doing since you're shooting JPEG is... I was. I'm not Since anymore. you were, I mean, you had to have been dialing in white balance with every single oh, shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I got to the point where I was like so precise with my exposure and everything was perfect. And yeah. I would look at it. I, I never used the histogram, but I would set it to uh, blink on the blown out sections yeah, yeah, yeah. Highlight alert. So, that I could quick, so that I could quickly see like, okay, I've got the littlest bit of white in the forehead or mm -hmm. something. I am overexposed. I'd reshoot the shot. Mm. Um, since I've switched over to RAW though, I honestly have become a worse photographer. I, the, sec more lazy. <laughs> the second you know 
that like, oh, Lauren will take care of that. <laughs> the second you know that, you can't make yourself when you shoot a shot. You're just gonna be like, that's yeah, fine. Like, it's a little blue. She can just, it, it takes one second for her to slide that over. I wouldn't say a worse photographer, just a more lazy one. That's what I, I mean. Okay, okay, that's true. If like, you switch back a JPEG, you do the exact same thing. I don't know, before. like, I'm terrified <laughs> now to go back. Like, when I think, oh my gosh, I used to shoot JPEG. <laughs> How did I do that? You know, um, in the at, in the moment, it was just normal to me. I kind of likened it to somebody shooting film. I know That's a lot of people that shoot JPEG. It's just you do that. You dial in everything exactly. Yeah. And if you do that, it's actually a, a big time saver. If you like the look directly out of the camera, and if you dial it in perfectly, dude, you're like not even having to do anything after the shoot. Oh, it's all like, I would do is I I would shoot it. I'd come home if I felt like it. If I didn't like maybe. You know, it's cloudy, I don't want to go to the beach or whatever. The next day, I could just go through the wedding, it might take me three hours, mm -hmm. and basically, I'm just deleting bad images. Yeah. That's all I'm doing. Every now and again, I'd throw an image into Photoshop, because I didn't know how to use Lightroom, and just <laughs> brighten it. Yeah. That was it. Um, and then, I did create a batch that I ran all of my images through. Mm. And um, the reason why I did that is, is I like shooting in Vivid with mm -hmm. Nikon, but as you know, it creates like these neon red skin tones yeah, sometimes. Yeah, a little gnarly. Yeah, so my batch would lower the reds. Oh, I see. It would um, bump the contrast a little bit. It would add a little bit more of a vignette. It really did like 50 different things. Like it yeah. was, it's such a long action that I'd been working on it for like a year. All the different things. Your masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, it's my masterpiece. <laughs> and uh, it actually would use this other plugin called Alien Skin. Oh, yeah, and it that. would it would like add these little film effects. So uh -huh. I, I would be like, adding this film grain plus this film look, minusing it out a little bit, adding a vignette, then subtracting. <laughs> it does all this stuff, but it would do it to every single picture. It would take a long time, like. Ran overnight or something. Yeah, like maybe eight hours to yeah. run through, every, but I'm not there, yeah. you know? And so um, I would always say I can I can get a wedding done in, uh, in just a few hours, because usually the night that I shoot the wedding, I get the batch rolling. Mm -hmm. So it's batching on every single image, even if it's bad. The next day I wake up, I just delete the bad ones, put the good ones on a disc, mail it out, everybody's happy. Yeah. So, okay, so now we work a little bit differently where, I mean, uh, I've, I've did, I shoot a lot of JPEG when I, you know, basically when it's not, for my own personal stuff, I'm always shooting JPEG and I'll just dial in everything. With weddings, the way we shoot is so high pressure run and gun. Like we're just moving constantly from one scene to the next. It's not that I don't want to, or I, I can't switch my white balance, I can't dial in everything, but it's that I, mean, I don't want to. <laughs> I just I just want to keep shooting, because what I'm doing, I mean, the way I'm typically working is just, from one scene to the next, it's just like, okay, they gave me 15 minutes for a couple session, I've still got to deliver all these shots that they want, and we're just, I'm just thinking of one to the next, going like moving really quick, and these are like 12, 14 hour days that you are so exhausted from afterwards. Yeah, those are killers. And so I, the last thing I want to think about is dialing in every single, when we get to the reception, I'll put in my white balance and stuff, but the rest of the day I don't. And so... You don't set white balance for like strobed images outside? I, feel I will like, for strobe. Okay. Like if we're, anytime we're setting up lighting, yeah. Okay. Um, when we're shooting journalistically outdoors, auto white balance. If we're shooting, you know, like if I have control, like if I walk into prep, I mean, you got plenty of time usually in prep to do whatever you want. I'll set up lighting and I'll do all that kind of stuff. But basically after prep, it's just like get the shots and then we'll, we'll get them in post-production. Like we'll nail them down so that they're flawless. And so with our process, we take everything into Lightroom. We apply what we call our signature production to every single image. So every image that goes out looks just like what you see on kind of like the blog. It has that signature kind of high contrast color look. That is our, our look. Um, but good skin tones and everything like that. But um, that nice high contrast look, we do some HDRs. We kind of come become known for this unique style of HDR that we do that looks very natural but still has all the regular tones. And the post-production has become a big part of our artistic process. I mean, clients are actually telling us that they like the way we produce our images. Like, they're, they're, they're not saying it in those words. They're coming in, they're going, when I compare my stu your stuff to other people's, there's just something I notice about them. They're just... Like they're more polished, more finished, mm -hmm. and they can't really put a name on it, but I go, oh, it's, it's a post-production. So it's kind of become a part of the artistic flow. And in a sense, you could say like on the wedding day, has it made you like a worse or more lazy photographer? I think so, probably. But, um, but I think it also makes your finished product better. And I think you can charge more money because of it, because your finished product is, is like flawless. 
and uh, I would never consider my work to be flawless. It's a little bit more natural. Mm -hmm. I, I never, I never retouch like skin and stuff unless something was really bad. Um, I think I, I've hired an album designer now, and I think she does some of that stuff if the client asks for it. But um, in terms of going in and like nitpicking every single image, all I worry about is white balance and exposure at this point. And yeah. I feel like it's been it's up to me the day of the wedding to like shoot it as best I can. And I, I am really interested to see your HDR technique because a lot of the shots that I'm seeing uh, on your walls look fantastic and he's telling me here that they're not <laughs> lit. So yeah, we don't um, do any other lighting, it's just the way we shoot and produce it. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, if you can learn the techniques, I mean I want to be able to shoot stuff like this. <laughs> okay, well, here's the crazy thing. So after all this stuff that we just talked about right now, the way you run your business, the way we run our business, and all these things, everybody would always say that there's these absolutes. Oh, if you're not doing this, you're not going to make money. If you're not doing this, you're not going to make money. Here's the crazy thing for everybody out there. Our base packages are around the same price, mm -hmm. right? Well, that's probably not true. I don't know what your base package is. I start at $2,800 for just four hours of coverage. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if you offer something that small. We start at um, $5,500, but then most of your clients are booking at that, aren't Yeah, they? that's probably the average for me. Okay. And then I go up to around 13000 Okay, so we're probably averaging a, a little bit more, but but dude, if you consider the amount of overhead and the staffing that we have, like overall, sure. this is all evening out. Well, I, w I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't <laughs> say that. I think, I think, I think you book more you definitely book more weddings than me. He's got a team of like a million people back there. So he can, you can shoot like 150 weddings a year, something like that. As a that. studio we can. Yeah, I'm shooting like 25, 30 a year. <laughs> That's huge right there. I think your average package is probably a decent amount bigger than mine. Just because I have a package at 13,000 doesn't mean that that's a consistently booked package, you know? All that being said, you know, I kind of want to make this point that there's so many people that say you have to do your wedding photography business this way. If you're not using a light meter, you're not a professional. If you're not shooting raw, you're not a professional. If you're not doing this, we've just talked about two completely different ways of running a business. And yet both of our businesses are successful in, in what we do. In our own way, yeah. So take that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, I'm I'm much more of a free spirit type guy and I don't have a family yet and so I love being able to leave for long periods of time. You know, there, there'll be a month in the middle of summer, I think um, July, I didn't have a single wedding. So I went up to New York for a week. I went up to Atlantic City and gambled. I went to Las Vegas, I went to California and I'm just traveling around, meeting friends, having a good time. And uh, if I had a studio back home that I was paying for, yeah. especially if I had employees that I felt like I had to manage, um, I would feel guilty and I'd feel like I need to be there oh, running sure, my business. There's no way I could be gone for a month from this, like a week maybe. <laughs> right. but a month? No. Right. No. And so I've just set up my business for that. And um, getting to know you, uh, you know, over the past year and everything, I think you love working. And maybe there's <laughs> parts of this job that you hate, but I just, you know, when I talk to you and I see all that you have going on here, I think you live for this. I live for other things. Yeah. You live for coming into work tomorrow and seeing, you know, how big you can grow the business and everything else. And that's great. And so you've built the business that works for you. And yeah. I feel like I've built the business that works for me. And one day I think I'm going to have to be a little bit more responsible. <laughs> and I may have to have uh, an employee in an office and something that I, that I go to on a daily basis and, yeah. and focus and get work done. But at this point, I uh, I hope that's a ways off. Well, dude, there's more than one day to get a cat, and you nailed it. I, I I do enjoy working. I mean, working is my hobby thing. So like, it's like I'll play a video game for like half hour, and I'll be like, hmm, I think I want to do some more work now. <laughs> like right. It's, it's kind of like my relaxation, which is kind of bad thing. My wife would say, <laughs> but but um, but yeah, just two different ways of living your life, of running your business, and both work, dude. So. I really appreciate you coming down, though, and doing this interview with us. Of course, and I appreciate you allowing me to interview you earlier. <laughs> you guys will see that interview later when you guys come out with your... Yeah, it's DVD. actually going to be on the full DVD, and it's we always call it a DVD because we don't know what else to call it, but it's probably going <laughs> a to be digital a, DVD or a tutorial online <laughs> thing. Uh, but it's going to be really long, and then we're going to try to cover everything, so it might be 12 hours long. I'm looking forward to it, dude, so it should be really good. Cool. I'm excited. All right. All right, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks.